Hi, my name is Lisa Lamb and I stock fabulous saddle stitched bag making kits uh, like this one, the Milano tote bag. And today I am filming a little tutorial to show you how to e more easily sew the piping into the base. So if you've ever sewn with piping before, you've probably used cotton piping and also um, some material to cover the piping. But because this is a saddle stitch kit and it uses PU and the piping is plastic, it's definitely going to feel different to how you usually, how it usually does when you're working with piping. So that's why I thought it'd be a good idea to just film a nice, slow tutorial focusing on that part of construction. So this is the um, pattern cover for the bag. And my website, if you want to see more saddle stitch kits, is So Lisa Lab. And all of the kits come with comprehensive instructions like this. And there's always loads of colour photos, loads of text, and even the um, piping bit, which I'm going to be showing you now, that is also covered in the booklet. But as we know, sometimes it's nice to be able to just watch a film of the um, procedure being done. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you what the piping looks like. So um, in the booklet, I don't suggest that you actually stitch the piping cover, which looks like that, to the plastic piping. So here's the plastic piping. And as you can see, compared to the cotton piping, which you've probably used before, this is far more rigid. And it needs to be far more rigid because when you're working with PU, PU is obviously going to be far more sturdy, shall we say, than fabric. So that's why your piping would need to be sturdy enough to support the thickness of the PU. And what it does is, if this was cotton, if the piping inside this were, were to be cotton, then you would just have this situation. It would be floppy and the piping itself would be able to provide no support whatsoever for the PU bag. But because the piping is plastic, so I can hold it like that, and it's holding its shape beautifully. But what is really nice is it's not so rigid that when you have the bag against your body, it won't squash, because you don't, obviously, you don't want a, a rigid edge against your body. So we've got this plastic piping, which is flexible, but far more sturdy than cotton. And I have taken, what I've done this time is, when you've, when you've used piping, you're probably used to stitching the binding over the piping. Now I don't suggest doing that in the pattern because you can just go ahead and sew the piping into the bag base and the bag without stitching the piping cord in. But I have found that since whip stitching the cover to the piping, it does actually make construction easier and it's definitely worth the short amount of time it takes to do so. And if you, I don't know if you can see, what I've done to do that is I've just used normal polyester sew or thread and a hand needle and I've whip stitched. So you can see the thread is really fine. I've whip stitched the plastic piping into the cover and I've only sewn it every three to four sew holes. It's not really, really precise. But what is very important is as I've whip stitched in, I've ensured that because as you can see, there are sew holes pre-punched into the piping cover um, as our sew holes are punched, or the, the sew holes are pre-punched in all of the pattern pieces and it's no different with the piping cover. So when you sew the piping cover to the piping, you need to make sure that the holes align so they match. You mustn't you mustn't sew them where the holes are mismatched. So just that's the only thing you need to be careful about. And because the the thread that I've used to sew um, the piping in is is nice and fine, you don't need to remove these tacking stitches. They can just remain in. So that's that's one less hassle to worry about. What is uh, really important to note is at the start, so this is the start, at the start of the piping, you can see that the plastic piping 
is one centimeter down from this edge now if you're going to sew the piping in you need to do that that's mentioned in the instructions but as i'm talking to you here on a video i'll just re-emphasize and um, where i've begun my tacking stitches is about six sew holes down so you want to you want to leave at least at least six six to eight doesn't really really matter but absolutely no less than six and that's where you start your tack stitches okay so there and you'll see at the other end so this is the end the end of the piping end you'll see that the plastic piping is way too long don't worry about that this gets trimmed anyway and also you'll notice that where, where i've stopped tack stitching i've stopped about eight stitches from the end that's very very important you must not tack stitch the cover to the um piping to the last sew hole don't do that that will make it very difficult for when you come to join marry the ends together it'll be very difficult for you to do that because when you've sewn the when you sew the piping to the bag what you're going to do is you're going to overlap the end to the start of the piping like so and you're going to trim the piping the excess piping to marry with this the, the start of the piping i won't be demonstrating that today but it is covered in fine detail in the instructions um, what i can do is just to prove a point i will show you there so on on this page i show you where the binding gets joined in a continuous circle there's lots and lots of pictures and loads of text so it's it's reasonably straightforward you'll just have to be very careful about taking your time but um yeah as i say i won't be able to cover doing that today because that would involve me sewing the whole of the base to the bag which would take ages um i just wanted to show you how to sew the piping to the bag in a reasonably relaxed way now another thing that isn't mentioned in the instructions because i discovered them having um already made the instructions is this really really great gadget um which i can't recommend enough so uh, a lovely customer called gainer she um recommended these to me and they're called leather suturing positioning needles or i believe if you go on your um, web browser and search leather positioning needles this should come up now they always look the same you'll have what looks like a donut at the edge of a pin that's usually silver and you have a barrel which is a brass color and what you'll see is the two pieces two parts they come apart so okay i think you might be able to guess these leather suturing needles are an alternative um, to sewing clips and stitch ponies and what they're for they're for is to hold your bag layers together when you're saddle stitching and they're reasonably firm so once you um, use this needle to push through all of the um, layers and sew holes and you've lined everything once th those two pieces are attached it's actually quite hard to pull them together that's because when you push the needle into the barrel it's uh, it's a spring-loaded lock inside so to remove the needle what you need to do is pull on this cap and i don't know if you can see it's spring loaded and when i pull the cap away it releases the needle so they're really really good it's such a good design it's such a simple thing they're very inexpensive i highly recommend you get them because they will make your saddle stitch life easier they do the job beautifully and they're inexpensive and they work ever so well so yes please go and get them heavily heavily recommend okay so what i'm going to do is to start off with i'm going to show you what i've done with um the bag so far to get to the point where we need to sew the piping i've taken the main pieces and i've stitched the side edges together saddle stitched them together and we're going to be working on the the base the bottom edge of the bag and i know it's the bottom edge of the bag because the handle sew holes are well they're now facing downwards 
because we're going to be working at the bottom of the bag of the bag here and what i've done on the right side of the pieces is uh, can you see the washi tape so that washi tape and that little um pen mark there tells me that that is the bottom edge center of this bag and i'm going to um i've done the same on the other side as well and the thing i want to do first is i want to get my I want to get my piping in position before I layer the bag base on top. So I've got my piping. So remember, this is the start of my piping because the piping is one centimeter down from the short edge. And what I need to do is I need to get the first sew hole of this um, piping. And I'm going to put this first sew hole and line it up with the center sew hole on my bag. So center sew hole here uh, line up the um, first sew hole on the piping like so and then I want to be able to um, I want my piping just to sit there for a moment while I match everything up and the best way for me to do that is to grab one of my um, suturing needles now I appreciate that if you're watching this video for the first time and you've never seen these gadgets before there's a high chance that you haven't got these leather suture needles so you can use sewing clips um, instead however if you're not in a rush to start this bag i highly recommend you order and wait for them to arrive first because um, it is amazing how much easier they make things so okay right as i said before i just want my piping to be in position on my bag for me to be able to add the base to the bag as well because as you can appreciate that's lots of layers so I'm just going to pop a suturing pin or a sewing clip onto the bag like so so as you can this is what I've done so far so right I've put put um I put a suturing pin there and this this sew hole the the first sew hole on the piping lines up with the center sew hole on my bag so look see the, the pin is holding everything in place everything is all matched up well i can relax about you know i don't need to worry about anything wobbling around because this is keeping everything under control for me so i can now in a relaxed fashion take the um bag base and i'm going to put the bag base center to the bag bottom edge center right sides together sandwiching the piping in between the layers so this is slightly kooky because i'm facing everything towards the camera and i can't see as well as i would like to but um we will do our best okay so I have lined up the bag base center, long edge center, with the um, bag base, the bag bottom edge center, and the piping is now sandwiched in beneath, in, in inside the layers. I'm going to get another suture pin, and I'm going to hold all of the layers steady so i'm now sandwiching the piping inside the bag and the base layers should i just put my glasses on i mean really lisa just you know put your glasses on ah, that's much better okay right there so so this was my this was my first this was my first suture pin just holding the piping in place so that i could more easily line up the bag bottom edge with the piping and with the base and everything is still all nicely lined up as it needs to be i can now remove the first pin because it's no longer needed I'm just going to put these bag layers down on the table for a moment 
because now I'm now in a position to start sewing. And the nice thing about these needles is, as I said before, because this barrel is spring loaded and it's gripping onto this needle for, you know, for, for all its life, I can relax. I, I know that nothing's going to come unstuck or shift um, because sometimes with sewing clips, obviously, if you put something on the table, knock against it, then the layers will come misaligned. But I know that that's not going to happen with these suture needles. So, you know, I can just put that on the table and I can now th thread my needles, which I've already done, threaded both my needles. And now I can begin sewing. In fact, though, what I think I will do is um, pop some more of these suture needles in. Um, so from what I gather, you can seem to buy these in packs of four or packs of eight or packs of ten. I wouldn't bother with buying packs of 10. Um, I bought a pack of eight, but actually thinking about it, you'll probably only sew with two to four at any given time. Because you imagine if you were to put eight or to 10 suture needles in your work, it's going to get quite weighty. And, you're, and as you're sewing, you need to move your suture needles away from you in the stitch line. So you're not going to want to have to fiddle around with eight needles as you're sewing i would say that sewing with anything from two to four at a time is perfectly sufficient so yeah just buy a pack of four and that's fine i've noticed that they come in um naught to six length and six to twelve length given the choice i'd go for six to twelve but i think that naught to six will also be fine um so yeah i'm just going to pop in uh, maybe, yeah, just, I'm just going to add another suture pin. And just to prove a point, I'm just going to sew with two at a time, which means that as I'm sewing along, I'm only ever going to need to move a couple of pins at a time. So, yeah, that, that's, that's what we've got. And I'm probably going to keep them quite spaced away. And the nice thing is I know that all sew holes in between these two positioning needles, I know they'll line up, which means that there's less time for waggling your needle around needed to find to make sure all of the layers match. So now to begin sewing. We are not, we're, we're not going to be, when we begin sewing, we're not going to begin sewing at the center sew hole. We need to leave some clearance inside the piping later on, for as I said before, for when we join the end of the piping, which will be coming from here, to the start of the piping. And we need to leave this area open because it makes it far easier for us to work because we can more easily see what's going on. And we know we'll be trimming piping and then matching all of the layers. So you need to leave a nice open area for you to be able to see what you're doing. So that's why when we begin sewing the piping to the bag, we start sewing about five sew holes in from the start. So you count here, one, two, three, four, five, and you pop your needle in. So I'll do that now, put it on the table, make my life easier. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the first, that's the first needle in, and then your second needle just goes in next door to the right. through all layers and then then you just proceed to saddle stitch in the usual in the usual way okay so I'll move the camera down so we can have a little have a little bit of saddle stitch action and what is great about these um 
needles, oh, I pulled that stitch out, is that because they're holding everything so securely and so accurately, do you notice I'm not needing to hold anything tightly as I can as I sew. In fact, I can actually just leave my bag on the table and the saddle stitch quite comfortably. And I know that these um, these positioning needles will be a godsend to anyone who has achy hands, achy joints, because we all do sometimes, don't we? And in, in normally, sewing with piping, even with a machine, is definitely a bit of a faff. We do it because the results are beautiful and for the structure that it adds. But it is a bit faffy and with saddle stitching and stitching with a plastic piece of piping even more faffy but really these suture needles are making it a far 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 more relaxed experience see look I, I, as you notice i'm not gripping anything i'm not holding anything i'm just relying on the needles to hold everything in place and my needle my needle as i'm sewing is just gliding through four layers through as if, as if they're butter because I know that everything is aligned okay and as you can see I'm just about to I'm, I'm just about hitting one of the the suture needles now so then it will be time for me to um, remove it and, and move it further down the stitch line so I'll just make this stitch And yeah, and if you haven't if you haven't made the kit already, definitely sewing in the piping just really makes life easier as well. Very easy to do. I really recommend that you do it, even though it's not mentioned in the pattern. I shall moving forward definitely recommend that you sew the cover to the piping before before you um, saddle stitch it to the bag. So now you can see that my saddle stitching has reached one of the suture needles. All I need to do is remove it and then just move it further down the line of stitching, making sure it's very, very important that all of the sew holes align each other beautifully. Otherwise, there's no point using the suture needles, obviously. Let's pop that on. And then I know that it's going to be secure. And it's just really nice knowing that I can relax, knowing that from this point to this point, that the sew holes of all the four layers will match each other. So it's quite easy to saddle stitch. And it's something that you really, really will appreciate when you come to stitch around the bag base curves, because naturally you've got you've got plastic piping which is somewhat resistant to being bent so that you can see that when you have to bend the piping around the bag base and then also get the bag get the bag to match up with it as well that's when these these suture needles again they come into their own so look i'll, I'll make a point of showing it to you so that's And then I'll add another one just to show you going it around the curve. It's making, I'll just count my sew holes because I don't, I want to make sure that I'm not missing any sew holes out. The thing with these kits is, as I said before, that with these kits, there is exactly the right number of sew holes for every part that you need to sew everything's aligned as it should be everything is laser cut to precision so if you find at the end of your work you're either too short on sewing holes or you are um or there are too many it means that you've gone awry somewhere so that's why you always got to make sure that 
you never miss any sew holes as you're sewing along. There, so you can see that these positioning needles make it really easy for you to even bend somewhat stubborn plastic piping around the curve. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. That was um, hopefully a nice slow video to show you that sewing with plastic piping saddle stitch style isn't necessarily that scary but especially with the help of these things now i'll place on um i'll place a link to or, or might even just place a google search because i know what happens um quite often when i recommend shops where to buy things then they often sell out and then the link becomes useless so perhaps what i'll do is i'll just link to um a google search so that you can find them yourselves they always look the same um and if you need any help uh if you have any further questions coming from this video please join my group so lisa lamb chat and so um, there's lots of people in it on a regular basis i'm always in it um, if i'm you know if i'm not the other members are really really helpful it's a very friendly supportive group where we talk about our saddle stitch bags or we ask questions or we just show them off so um, i hope this video was useful um, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.